This time I have an old Yamaha receiver. This one's a CR66 Mark II. And this one here doesn't work. Brought to me by a neighbor who's had it since it was new. It looks like it's been stored in a wet basement or a garage or something because inside it's not in great shape. But we're going to see if we can get this one working with minimal parts and see how it sounds. Here we have an old Yamaha. Receiver, this one's a model CR66 Mark II. Cabinets, oh, seen better days. Looks like it's kind of warped, almost like it's been sitting where there's been moisture. So this one was brought in for service and uh, I don't know what's really wrong with this one. So let's hook it up and see what it does. You don't see these type of stickers much on equipment. There's the back of this unit. Okay, let's turn this thing on. Well, we got bad controls for starters, so let's start by cleaning the controls. Okay, this unit is not a particularly high power output unit. It looks like it's been uh, stored where it's been damp too. Look at all the Look at all the rust, and uh, I mean, it's got rust on the chassis here. So it's been stored in the damp, looks like. Uh, the output transistors on here, as you can see, they are not super high power. This is probably 40 watts per channel. 2SB566 and 2SD476. Thirty, forty watts per channel, I would guess, from those transistors. Turn it on again and see if it's just the input controls and so forth that are bad. Okay, volume control is bad for starters. There's a couple U joints in here. So, first things first, I'm going to clean the switches and controls and uh, we'll take it from there. So I'm just going to use some neutral on this one. The volume control and balance controls are relatively easy to get to as they are mounted on this little circuit board right there. So that makes it easy to get some cleaner into these controls. I give this control a good clean before powering the unit up again. Don't hear anything. Nothing on the right channel. Switch. Okay, we'll continue to clean the switches and see if we get any improvement. Oh, that's right, I'm being too rough on these controls, you know. Can't have aggressive cleaning. Okay, okay, we got stereo.
little antenna on here. That's why it's noisy. All right. Okay, yeah, got all the controls clean now. The uh, light bulbs are shot. I'm going to try and find some LEDs to put in for the meter light. So here's a dumb design that uh, that Yamaha used to do. I'm sure others did it as well. The lights are connected in series with each other. If we look at the voltage across the, the lights themselves, 40 volts. So you use three 12 volt bulbs. When one bulb burns out, the others, of course, don't work. But in this case, it looks like there's more than one bulb that's burned out because I got no voltage across these lights here. Right, if I put them together, the other lights should normally light up really bright. But there's no voltage here, so obviously there's more than one bulb that's gone open. It's kind of a silly design. Probably two of the bulbs have gone open, and that's why the, uh, the third one's not working. It's going to inspect this and see whether the, uh, the filament is open on this one. And the filament is open on this bulb, so this one here is also probably open all three of them well this one might not be actually this one might be still okay but uh, these two are definitely both open well I was gonna hook an LED and put an LED in the in the meter here uh, I hooked it up to power using resistor of course and uh, the amount of light that I got through this meter was not enough so I think if we want to get the meter light working I'm gonna have to get some incandescent bulbs that will be sufficiently bright enough to see it because the LED just did not cut it. Uh, I'm going to talk to the guy that owns this and see whether he wants to go down that road to replace the lights because at this point I don't know what he wants to spend or if he even wants to spend any money to fix this thing. He just kind of brought it to me and said look at it and see what can get it going. So I have it going now. Got the radio working on it but no dial light. Well, there aren't. this doesn't have dial lights anyway, it just has the pointer. Just the pointer lights up and the meter. So it's working, just had to clean all the controls on it and switches. Let's say it's not in great condition, it looks like it's been sitting in a garage for the past 20 years. All this rust and stuff on here. Anyway, I'm going to leave it at this at this point. Another thing I've noticed on here is that some of the controls, as you can see, just turn forever. What that is, is the control itself sits on another sub shaft and the bond is broken for the glue uh, the, the glue is broken I should say that uh, secured that control so we're gonna put some crazy glue on there and glue that shaft back on if you guys are wondering um, the crazy glue I'm using is uh, dollar store special this is uh, four little tubes for a buck. It's the same stuff as Crazy Glue and uh, works the same, but it's a heck of a lot cheaper than buying the Crazy Glue branded, and it works just as well. There, that should fix that one. I think the others are okay. It was just that one control. We'll let that set. The tuning um, control itself is kind of stiff. It doesn't spin like it should. That's going to be the uh, probably the bearing in behind here is dry.
much better. Okay, let's put this knob back on at the zero position. There. So this unit's all fixed up. The exception is the, the dial light is, the, the pointer is out and the meter light. So I'm gonna to talk to the owner of this one and see whether he wants to uh, get some new lights for it. And then I'll have to, if he wants to go down that road, I'll get some new 12 volt incandescent bulbs and we'll replace them. Because this one's not gonna lend itself to putting in LEDs. Just the way the, the meter is configured, LEDs with their directional light it's not going to light this evenly, so it won't look good. Make it look original. We're going to have to go with LED or incandescent bulbs anyway. Um, if we go down that road, I'll make another video of replacing the lamps. But for now, we're going to finish this one off as this unit is basically ready to go. Thanks for watching.